All right, so learning objective three continues what we looked at in learning objective two, where we're gonna be looking at uh, variances between the price and the quantity, but this time we're gonna do it for labor. Uh, learning objective two, we did it for direct materials, right? So all of those concepts will just repeat themselves here. So if you got a little bit of a better understanding of that, it's gonna help you here. So a direct, uh, a, a direct labor variance is what's looked at uh, very uh, promptly here. So we're still looking at that zonic tonic, which I'm not really crazy about. Um, and here they uh, incurred 2,100 direct labor hours at an average rate of $14.80, okay. However, the standard hours that were allowed were 2,000. And the standard labor rate was 15. So we have to calculate uh, the variance, the total labor variance, right? So we do that by looking at the actual hours times the actual rate, okay? Uh, so this is the actual number of hours times the actual rate. We take away the standard hours at the standard rate and the difference will be our variance, okay? <clears throat> so we had $31,080 of actual hours and actual at the actual rate. Uh, we had standard amount of 30 grand. So basically uh, 1,080 was the difference. And because it's, uh, the actual is larger than the standard, right? It's considered an unfavorable variance, variance. So this is for total labor, total labor. Well, Let's take a look at um, the variance regarding the price, labor price variance first, okay. So here, um, when we do that, we wanna again, uh, understand the variance in terms of what's attributable to price, what's attributable to quantity. So we're looking at the price variance as the actual hours times the actual rate, and we're gonna take away the, uh, to, uh, the sum of actual hours by the standard rate. That's gonna give us the, the uh, price variance here. So $3,180, uh, take away the $31,500, and it looks like we actually right, have a favorable price variance because our actual costs were lower than uh, what the standard rate would have been at that actual hours, right, for those hours. Well, then we have to look at the quantity. Right? What was the difference or the variance in quantity? Uh, for that, we're actually gonna be using the actual hours at the standard rate. And we're gonna take away the standard hours at the standard rate. So the actual hours were 2,100 times 15, so 31,500, but we actually budgeted 2,000 at 15 or 30,000. So that ends up being an unfavorable variance, right, of 1,500, because the actual hours were much higher, okay? And that's what causes the total variance, labor variance to be $1,080, okay? So again, all we're doing is when we, we calculate the total and then we're breaking up of that total, how much is related to the price, how much is related to the quantity. And that's what you were doing for materials. You're doing it again here for labor. Um, your book likes to use this uh, matrix uh, of sorts if you have, your book open, uh, page 477, uh, we'll have this matrix. Again, it shows you the actual hours at the actual rate uh, in box one. Box two shows you the actual hours at the standard rate. 
and box three shows you the standard hours at the standard rate. So to get the price variance, right, we take the actual hours at the actual rate and subtract out the actual hours at the standard rate. And that gave us our $420 favorable variance in terms of price labor, right? However, quantity was a different issue, right? Because here we have the actual hours at the standard rate subtracting out our standard hours at the standard rate. And that created a pretty large imbalance, unfavorable. And that's basically the bulk of the total. Okay. So, um, so what happens when you actually have such a, I mean, you're doing good on the cost for labor, the price of labor, but the quantity is so far off. You know, what, what does this tell you? Um, well, it, it can be, uh, I tell you, tell you a few things. Um, in terms of the price variance, uh, you could be paying different workers different wages than you expected to pay. And so I think in this case, since it was favorable, they might not, have, they, they didn't pay as much as they thought, right? They originally planned $15 an hour, but as you saw earlier, the rate was actually $14.80. So paying uh, different wages than expected was certainly a factor in why they had a favorable labor price variance. They save money, basically. Um, you could also uh, attribute that to a misallocation of workers, which I think in this case might not have been the reason for the price variance. Looks like there was to say uh, uh, the wages were were you know, were low, much lower. <clears throat> well, why would it be off a little bit? Well, when you have a um, when you have a unionized shop all the costs are basically set by contract. So they're very easy to calculate. You kind of already know what your costs are. Uh, when you have a workforce that's not unionized, you're gonna be bringing people in at different rates. And so your average rate could be significantly different. Could be a little bit more, could be a little bit less. Um, and so basically it's the manager who's saying I'm hiring you at this price per hour, I'm hiring you at this price per hour. So they're really kind of responsible for the difference. Okay. Um, and that's the difference. So, uh, you know, is it better to have a unionized shop? I think for calculating costs, it is. Um, at least you know, at least you know what you expect. So in terms of what really caused the problem here was the quantity variance, labor quantity variance. Uh, and here, basically, we had uh, workers who simply were just not as efficient as, um, as we originally had hoped, right? Uh, and that inefficiency caused uh, problems, uh, very unfavorable problems in terms of uh, the numbers show. And so basically, again, this comes back to the same production department. So. Um, uh, problems of, of hiring people that can't get the job done. Well, it takes a lot longer. All right, and we're finishing it off, the variances with uh, manufacturing overhead. No surprise, right? We did materials, labor, now overhead. Uh, you've heard that since day one in this class. So by now it's no surprise. Um, so what are we looking for here? Well, we're looking first for a total overhead variance. Um, and that's going to be your difference between the actual cost and the, and the overhead that you actually applied, what you had figured it to be. Okay. So illustration 1124 in your book, which now goes on to page 478, shows that this particular company has um, looked at it from its variable overhead and fixed overhead to get a total actual overhead, okay? And again, you'll always see overhead sort of broken into variable and fixed, right? Well, they basically <clears throat> uh, early on uh, had to have a predetermined overhead rate. Uh, and that predetermined overhead rate uh, 
was five bucks. So let's see how this gets applied. Well, the formula for, for total overhead variance um, is the actual overhead minus the overhead applied. And again, applied overhead is the standard. It's almost like the, the budget that they had planned, right? Versus what actually happened. In this case, this is the standard overhead that they applied. Um, so what they uh, applied was $10,000 worth of overhead. What actually happened was $10,900, right? Both their variable and fixed costs are put together here from the previous slide, I believe. And here is your standard $5 an hour. So standard hours allowed are the hours that should have been worked for the units that were produced. Okay. In this case, because the actual overhead is greater than the applied overhead, uh, you have an unfavorable variance because you had higher costs, which is not favorable to your company. Okay. So we look at uh, this basically through looking again at price and quantity variances. Um, but it's a little bit of, uh, it's a little confusing here because um, we have to look at what overhead was controllable. Um, so if, if something could be controlled, we can measure that. And then we have to look at the volume, right? Um, you know, so where the fixed costs uh, calculated properly, where they over applied, where they under applied uh, during the year. So this is the, the last sort of step here. Um, so manufacturing overhead variances are caused by a number of issues. Um, one, again, the overhead rate, it might be over applied or under applied uh, when it comes to indirect labor, electricity, things along this line. Um, machines could be poorly maintained and thus that could cause a variance. Um, the materials that go through the production process uh, might be going at a much slower pace because of a lack of a skilled labor force. Um, that causes changes in overhead. Uh, also, you might not be able to, uh, you might not have had that many sales and so you're going to have a uh, difference there, right? You're all budgeting that. So in terms of learning objective three, um, again, the, the most important thing is to look at the labor and manufacturing overhead variances. That's the big lesson here. Uh, and it shows up with this particular do it exercise. If you have your book on page 479, that's where this is. Page 479 here. Okay. So we're looking at product YY. Why, why are we looking at this? Because it's part of the problem. No, no, no. Okay. So your standard cost of product YY, YY me, uh, includes three hours of direct labor. So this is the standard three hours of direct labor at 12 bucks an hour. Your predetermined overhead is $20 per direct labor hour. So your overhead's based on labor hours, okay. So what happened in July? The company actually incurred 3,500 hours of direct labor and the cost was, the average cost was $12.40. So you're gonna see a variance there, of course. And uh, per hour, and $71,300 of manufacturing overhead costs were part of that uh, expense. It produced 1,200 units. So A, part A, they want you to compute the total price and quantity variances for labor, mm -hmm. part one, part A. And then after that, compute the total overhead variance. So which is gonna be based on your labor. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, so as you see here, we're gonna just substitute the amounts um, 
in the formula. First thing, total labor variance, right? Your total labor variance is going to be your hours incurred actual times actual rate, actual hours times actual rate. And you take away the um, standard hours at the standard rate. So standard is three hours of direct labor and you had 1200 units. So you get 3,600 from that. And $12 is your standard rate. So again, the hours, standard hours times the units gives you the 36 times the 12 hours, a uh, $12 an hour, which is your standard cost. So when you take the differences, you'll see here that it's a $200 difference and it's unfavorable. Okay, it's unfavorable. Well, now let's break it up into the price variance first, and then we'll go to quantity. So first of all, the price variance, we have uh, actual um, hours times actual rate. And we're gonna subtract the actual hours times the standard rate. And when we do that, you'll notice that there's a large unfavorable difference here of $1,400. And that's because we actually spent $1,400 more than we had uh, thought in our standard cost. Right. So it was above that. Uh, what about quantity variance? So in this case, um, 3,500 uh, times the uh, $12, there's your actual actual there. And here we have 3,600 times the $12. So, so you have actual times, um, times the actual rate, uh, standard times the standard. So I'm sorry, actual times standard, standard times standard. So your difference here is $1,200 favorable. So your quantity variance was very good, very good. Um, but your price variance caused the 200. So 12, uh, $1,200 favorable compared to $1,400 unfavorable, your difference is $200 still unfavorable. Okay. Uh, total overhead. In this case, we have uh, seventy one thousand three hundred dollars of total uh, costs here. Overhead costs. Um, well, what was it supposed to be? Uh, it was supposed to be seventy two thousand. How do we get the seventy two thousand? Well, again, three direct labor hours at twelve hundred units times the twenty dollar. The predetermined overhead rate is $20 per hour. So this is where you get um, the 72,000. So in this case, you were expected to spend 72,000. You only spent 71,300. So your variance for overhead is favorable, $700 favorable. Okay, I'm gonna stop and come back to the main screen and ask you to populate. Uh, and ask if there's any questions on that.